How's it going guys? It's Ryan here and welcome to my low-level Armadale solo guide. Uh, to start off, here is some helpful information about the Armor Boss. So, combat level 210, uh, Armor Boss has 75,000 life points, a max hit of 1,600 with ranged, an attack speed or attack interval of 1.8 seconds, attacks with range and magic, and has no weakness. Uh, now, uh, there are three minions in the boss room. Uh, there's a melee one, a ranged one, and a mage one. They're all level 146 combat, they all have 10,000 life points, and they all have a max hit of 365. Uh, now, requirements and recommendations. Uh, first off, for this guide, to solo the Armadal boss, uh, you're going to need 70 range and defense, and at least 40 plus prayer. You're going to need to have completed the Edgar's Ruse quest for the Trollheim Teleport spell, and you're going to need 60 strength or agility to enter the God Wars dungeon. Now, if you don't have uh, the range, defense, or prayer requirements, uh, you could consider going in a larger team, but soloing probably isn't for you. Uh, now, recommendations. Uh, I recommend you have 52 summoning uh, for the Spirit Terror Bird. I recommend you have 80 plus range for something like a Royal Crossbow or even just a little more accuracy. I recommend you have a 10 minute grave so that if you die, you can try and get back in time to get your stuff back. And I also recommend you've completed the World Wakes quest for the Guthix's Blessing ability, uh, which just helps a bit. It's not as important as the other three. Okay, so this is the setup uh, with armor. So there's sort of an upgrade and downgrade list. If you have any questions about gear, uh, feel free to just post it in the comments and I will respond to it. I check the comments multiple times a day. Uh, so yeah, you should get a, a reply pretty quick. Okay, so now we've got an up and downgrade list uh, to do with weapons. Uh, so you've got Ascension Crossbows at the top, and it goes all the way down to Carol's Crossbows. So you've got quite a range and a variety. Some personal uh, recommendations of mine. Uh, first one, Death Lotus Darts uh, are level 85 range weapons, and they're very inexpensive. You just need a lot of ports progress. Uh, so if you're interested on how to get those, I have a guide, so I will link it in the description, and I'll put an annotation on the screen right now. Um, and another personal favorite of mine uh, is the Royal Crossbow. I also have a guide on how to get that. Um, and the third uh, personal favorite of mine is the Segai, uh, because they're only about 200 GP each. You can just buy them on the GE, and they are better than an Armadale Crossbow or a Carol's Crossbow uh, as a level 72 range weapon as opposed to the level 70 weapons uh, as the Armadale Crossbow and the Carol's Crossbow. So yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments, and I will answer them as soon as I can. Uh, now, inventory setup. Uh, first thing you're going to want, you're going to want your stat boosting potions, so whether that be overloads, extremes, or supers. Um, you're going to want prayer renewals, and you're going to want super restores or prayer potions. Um, and concerning food, uh, there's a sort of up-down grade list. I wouldn't recommend bringing summer pies, because they take two bites. Uh, but as you'll see with the method, you're going to only be eating, uh, or mostly be eating after the kill, just to get your hit points back to full before the start of the next kill. Uh, so you can use summer pies. Uh, now for familiars, uh, Yak, Tortoise, Steady Unicorn, then uh, something like a Terror Bird. Uh, overhead Prayers, Soul Split, or Protect Range. Obviously this is a low level guide, so I wouldn't expect you to have Soul Split. And in this method, uh, and in the kills I'll be showing you, I won't be using it. Um, now Stat Boosting Prayers, Anguish is the best. Then you've got Rigor, and then you've got Other. So what Other is, is any of the um, normal like lower level prayers that boost your range and also your defense. And I would re strongly recommend putting on Protect Item and Berserk if you have it, um, as in if you've got the Ancient Curses. Uh, now I'm going to show you how to get there and the kill count. Okay, so here's how you're going to get there. Uh, so you're going to break your Trollheim tablet or use a Teleport to Trollheim spell. Um, and then you're going to sort of just go as I go. So starting with, uh, well, you can renew your summoning points. And then you're going to sort of climb east down the mountain as I go right about now. And it's pretty self-explanatory. I just figure while I'm running this way, and you can follow this way as well, um, I'm going to talk about the gear I'm going to be using for the guide. So I'm using Carol's, which is a level 70 range gear, and I'm using a Royal Crossbow. As I did say, it's recommended you have 80 range, although you can get away with less, as I previously mentioned. Uh, but yeah, that's sort of what I wanted to be, uh, just what I wanted to quickly tell you. Uh, now, this is where you need your 60 strength or 60 agility to get by this rock. And then once you're by that rock, you just sort of run straight and you're in the God Wars dungeon. And now I'm also going to talk about godly protection. You need an item that says Armadil on it, or else all the Arma minions are going to be killing you. So you want to make sure you have that. A good one is the Armadil pendant from the Temple of Ikov quest because it's free. You just do that quest and you get it and you can wear it and it will give you immunity from the Armadil um, followers. 
Now, from here, I know I, uh, I go sort of east, but you actually want to go south, due south from that entrance, and that will get you right into the room. Now, you're going to grab all that little thing with uh, 70 range requirement, and then you're good to go. That is where you're going to get your kill count. Okay, so this is how you're going to get your kill count. Uh, so once you've gotten here, uh, you're going to want to be killing Avianzis or Spiritual Mages. I recommend killing the Avianzis, though, uh, because they drop lots of adamant bars, which is bank, basically. You make a lot of money uh, killing them. So yeah, just pull out your action bar, uh, whatever setup you want. Uh, that is the setup. Where's my range setup? Oh, there we go. Okay, and yeah, get going on the Avianzis. And this should take you maybe 10 minutes. I was fine when you held my hand. I was fine when you pulled me down. You said the stars would answer. You said our prayers were written down. I was fine when you pulled me in. You were forced to be human. And then the world came after. And I had never questioned. Okay, once you have your kill count, what you're going to do is you're going to run this way and there are going to be some uh, Zamorak followers who are going to be attacking you, but don't worry, they're not going to hit you very much. And you're just going to run right up to here, this little door. And this is sort of the entrance to the boss room. And that guy is in the wrong spot. So now I'm going to show you some actual kills. So yeah, I'll get the next kill, uh, but I'm going to take this time to talk about abilities a little bit. Uh, so this is my setup. You can sort of make it what you want it to be. I want revolution on, so I'm going to click on, not that, not that, why, oh there we go, revolution, uh, so that it just does the basics automatically, that makes it a little quicker. Uh, now, if you don't have soul split, you do not want to use the shadow tendrils ability. Even if you have it, you shouldn't be using it, because it deals a lot of damage to you. Uh, so yeah, that's not too nice. Uh, but if you do, you can use it. It'll hit like extremely high amounts of damage. But your ultimate you want to be using is Death Swiftness uh, because it rapidly increases your damage by like a ton. So yeah, as I was saying, Death Swiftness is a reward from the World Wakes quest. You don't need all those crazy requirements. I don't even think there are any requirements for the World Wakes, although don't quote me on that. Uh, so yeah, if you can do that and get that Death Swiftness ability, it's great. If not, you're just going to want to be going through your uh, your three threshold abilities until you get the kill. Me, I'm going to be using Death Swiftness because it's extremely helpful. It is time to go in, put on the prayers, drink the potions, all the potions. My familiar is going to die pretty soon, and go in, enter boss room. Now, the first kill is actually the hardest kill because your minions aren't stacked up, so you're going to be eating more in the first kill than any of the other ones. Uh, but later on, I'll tell you what corner to stand in, and it makes it quite a bit easier, because right now, as you can see, the boss is kind of throwing me around everywhere, and I'm going to run forward and just get myself in this corner. Um, and hopefully the minions stack up a bit, because that makes it easier. But yeah, now that I've got an ultimate, it's time to use Death Swiftness, and the kill should go a lot faster from this point. So yeah, I'm potting, I just you drank a superset, and I'm wearing carols, so level 70 range gear. Carols is pretty cheap, and it's pretty decent as well. Um, so you're going to, once you've used your death swiftness, assuming you have it, you can see some big hits happening right now. Uh, you're going to want to use all of your threshold abilities, or as many as you can in the time. Um, mm -hmm. uh, just note, activate your aura. I activated mine a little bit before, so that's why I don't need to, but yeah, activate your <laughs> aura, don't forget to do that. Um, keep your prayer up, and keep going. As you can see, we did the kill, and we didn't even have to eat. Uh, which is pretty badass, I must say. And there are some, some foods. So yeah, once you've done the actual kill, you can kill the minions in pretty much whatever order you want. Just, uh, you might want to use something like Guthix's Blessing at the end of the kill, uh, to get your hit points back, because it's... Yeah, it's, it's free. You may, you may as well use it uh, once you've got full adrenaline at the end of the kill. Now, the other thing you can do is you can log out and log back in to reset the timer on the Guthix's Blessing. And then what that does for you is um, 
that basically means that you can use it every single kill so that you can end every single kill at pretty much full HP so you barely need food at all so yeah there is the first kill so you're gonna grab all your loot obviously without a yak or anything you can't grab everything but these dwarf weed seeds are pretty good so I'm gonna drop my armadillo pendant because I don't really need it I have armor items in my bank so next time I go I'll just bring one of them and yeah that's that's the kill so from this point you can pray at the altar I'm gonna do so and it'll recharge your prayer points once every, I believe, 12 minutes? 10 minutes. Once every 10 minutes, you can recharge your prayer points. And this is the corner you're going to want to stand in. So yeah, uh, the next skill is going to start pretty soon, so I'm just going to keep it rolling. And boss is up. Prayer's up. And what you want to do is you want to let the boss come towards you. So if you don't attack the boss for long enough, the boss will start running at you. Like that. And now you're going to attack the boss reason for that is so that he's stacked on top of a minion so that when you use uh, some of your thresholds like this ability right here it's gonna hit both of them now as you can see I just killed the minion but he'll respawn in about 10 seconds or very likely I mean it's a random spawn chance but it happens pretty quick uh, so yeah same thing as the last kill pop off the death swiftness and let's go I might use a shadow tendrils, tendrils just to show you why you shouldn't be using it Ah, uh, yeah, I'll do that. So I'll, I'll do a Shadow Tendrils just to show you why you shouldn't use it. I might end up one-hitting myself, but that's okay. Eat the food. 7,715. That was a badass hit, but it also hit me a lot too. So that's why you don't want to be using that ability. But I must say that that's probably my highest hit ever at this boss. A 7,715, something like that. Uh, so yeah, it is a very powerful ability. If you're going for speed kills, maybe use it, but it's it's a waste of food if you're trying to stay for a long period of time. And there's the kill again. We did it. That was that was pretty easy. So yeah, as as is usual, as you upgrade your gear further, the kills are going to get easier and easier. But even this isn't too bad at all. Uh, so we've eaten two food, and that was entirely because of the ability I used. So we'd probably have had to eat maybe one that kill. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much the guide. Uh, now I'm going to move on to sort of drops and all that kind of thing. So yeah. Enjoy that. Okay, so now we've got the notable drop. So how I've separated it is over 1 mil and under 1 mil. The reason I've done that is because the prices change all the time. So if I say, oh, this item's 20 mil, and then you get one, then it's only 10 mil, you'd be, you'd be pretty pissed. I would too. Uh, so over 1 mil are items that are over 1 mil, and they're going to stay that way. And under 1 mil are probably the same thing. So you've got the Armital Buckler as under 1 mil. That's a shield. Um, and you've got Hardened Elite Clue Scrolls. Over 1 mil, you've got the arm metal chest plates, chains, girts, boots, gloves, helmet, and the hilt. Uh, now, over 1 mil, they can be well over 1 mil, as in right now, the arm metal hilt is closer to 20 mil. And yeah, that's about it. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask me via YouTube PM comments, or uh, you can PM me in-game or go into my friend's chat. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this guide, and yeah, thanks for watching. Peace. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. You can click the little video on the left and it will take you to my gaming channel. That is some Civilization 5. I play all sorts of other games on there as well, so if you want to check that out, feel free to do so. And on the right, uh, that was uh, Road to 500 Mil Drop Tab Episode 19. If you want to check out that series, you can click on there as well. All my other links, my Twitch, uh, my Twitter, and all that stuff are over there, so you can add me and follow me on all those as well. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, feel free to leave a like if you enjoyed, uh, but yeah. Um, don't feel obliged to. Thanks so much for watching, and peace.